In this video, we'll talk a little bit more about editing our fades. Let me take these two dialog clips and combine them. And I'll add a fade in with my smart tool, a fade out with my smart tool, and a crossfade with my smart tool. Adjust the bounds. There we are. Now, if I double click a fade, I get the fades editing box. And there are a couple different things I can do here. One is I can audition the fade. That's the speaker icon here. In order to audition the fade, I have to have set up an audition path. That's in IO settings. And right here is audition paths. If this is not set, I won't be able to audition the fades. And this audition path is used elsewhere in Pro Tools. So it's a good idea to set this up and you can set it to any port on your audio interface. So I've got it set out to my main outputs. Double click and let's audition the fade. Recommended for material that is phase coherent or nearly phase coherent, as in the case of crossfade between identical. Now you'll notice I got a little bit of the audio playing past the fade. And that's set under preferences on the editing page. There's a section over here for fades. Fades, dialogue, preview, pre-roll, and post-roll. Let me lower that to just 1500 and make this 1500. That determines when I audition how much happens before the fade and after. When I'm working with a fade in, it's only after. Let me audition that. Recommended for material that is phase coherent or nearly phase coherent, as in the case. If I audition an ending clip, as shape curves are useful with material is difficult to fade effectively. I start a little bit before. How about a crossfade? With this fade, you can also an S curve, continuous fade curve. This creates or crossfade. With this fade, you can also an S curve, continuous fade curve. This creates. Now with fade ins and fade outs, I can set the slope and the shape. The slope has two settings: equal power and equal gain. And each of these has a very different sound and is different for different types of audio. Shape is the same. I can set an S curve. I can set a specific shape. That one immediately jumps to fade in. This one immediately jumps over on the left hand side. Or I can have a curve like that. If I do equal gain, I have a couple other settings. And once again, I can audition all of these. Recommended for material that is phase coherent or nearly phase coherent, as in the case. Same thing works with fade outs. I can set my curves, equal power or equal gain. And then over here, I have a couple different options. If I click this button, I just get the shape of the fade. If I click this, I get the fade superimposed over the waveform. And I can zoom in to the waveform and out of the waveform using these arrows. If I want to reset the size, I command click and the waveform goes back to its normal shape here. I can also superimpose the two waves together and we'll see what will happen. This will be more useful when we look at crossfades in a moment. And then I have this which shows me the summed waveform. So that's how we edit our fade-ins and our fade-outs. In the next video, we'll talk about editing crossfades.